Right, let's make a start. So this is the card we're aiming for today. Um, and what I thought I would do, as soon as I saw this stamp set, um, which is the Blossoming Lily, I called it a Blossoming Tulip on Monday. Well, why did I do that? Cracking up. Um, anyway, this is the Blossoming Lily that I'm using today. Um, I haven't got any packaging for this, so this is as it is. Obviously, it's got a die set with it as well. Um, but I'm just using this small flower here and one leaf. Okay, not using anything else. Um, on my original one, this one, I used this leaf. But to be honest, because it's got this little extra bit at the at the end here, it made colouring it in a little bit confusing. So I decided to go with the plainer leaf on this one that I'm doing today. And, and I actually think it works equally as well. It just gives a slightly different look. So that's what we're heading for today. And then I'm using this sentiment here, the Love You. Obviously, I use Thanks a Bunch, this one on here. But I want to use a different one on this card today. OK, so as you can see, there's one flower. And all I've done is um, masked it, stamped it, masked it, stamped it again. Same with the leaf. And I've done them alternately all the way around so that the, the overlap is the same for both the flower and the leaf. OK, so they they interweave properly, if you know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> hopefully all will come clear as we go along. So what am I using today? I'm actually using um, this little stamp here off the Textures A6 stamp set. I'm using the Nested Scalloped and Plain Circles. Hi, Christine. Um, and purely and simply just to give me the circle to work on um, for the basis of this card. So the, these won't appear anywhere on the card. It's just that they come in useful for all sorts of things. So let's make a start. This is my base card and I'm going to do the background stamping first so that that's all done and out of the way. So I'm using the Versifying Claire purely and simply because it's a really nice orange and I wanted to use orange because I'm using orange on my flowers today. And I'm literally random stamping in the background, off the card, um, anywhere really, just to give some background interest on the card without sort of detracting too much from the main image. I think that'll do. That's all I want really. Um, it's just some, some background interest just to take the take away the stark whiteness of the card. I'll just get rid of that bit of ink off my mat and then carry on. So I'm going to put that to one side now because basically I'm finished with that for now until I come to do this bit. So first off you need your circle to work round. I would say <clears throat> some people will probably do it freehand. I wouldn't because you want it to look uniform. You don't want it to look wonky. If, you, if you're if you going to do it, then I think it's worth spending the time and doing it properly. I'd got a cut out circle that I've already used. Obviously, you can see that I've used it for something else as well. And all I've done is put it down on my card and drawn a circle around it in pencil. Not too heavy. You can always rub it out afterwards because obviously you're using ink on top of this. So when it's all dry and you've done all your stamping, you can rub this line out and then it won't interfere with your colouring. OK. <clears throat> so we make a start on stamping around this circle. I'm going to take that off there. Now you can see here that I've made some masks and all I've done really is stamped the image at the top of the post-it note. So where the sticky bit is and I've just I've stamped it on one and I've pulled three pages off and I've cut three out at once and then split them so that they're all individual okay but you'll see on this one that i've cut the end stalk off so this is the the whole flower and this is the one that i'm going to use to start my wreath off with okay because this end stalk i don't want to interfere with the stamping as i come all the way round. so when i come to finish off the circle i don't want this stalk to interfere with the last flower that will become clear when we get to the end OK, so stamp my first stamp and I'm using an archival ink here and I'm using a very pale grey. It's called shadow grey. 
and the reason I've gone with a grey is because I didn't particularly want to use black. I do find when you colour in, particularly with pencils, black can be a little bit harsh. So I've used this shadow grey, which is quite light, which gives me enough, enough colour in the stamped image to be able to do my colouring afterwards, but doesn't interfere with the actual stamping. OK, now you'll see on the flower here that there's a petal that sits sort of proud of the petal behind it. So there's three petals here and I'm using this bottom petal as my marker round my circle. So I'm using the stem here and the bottom flower, a bottom flower petal here. OK, and what I want to do is I want this petal to sit this side of the circle and I want the stem to actually sit on the circle. OK, <clears throat> so take my stamp and I'm using this bottom petal here on my circle and it's going just inside the circle. And at the same time, I'm putting the stem on the on the main circle as well. But because I don't want the, this stem on my circle, I don't want to stamp this. I'm just going to put this down here because this is where my last flower will go. So I'm putting that in place and then I'm going to stamp so that this stem sits on this um, mask here. OK. If I do it and then show you, you'll see what I mean. OK, so my bottom petal comes just inside the circle. Yeah. And then my stalk here is on the last flower. And you'll see why as we go further round. So I've stamped that and I'm just masking that off because I don't want that to interfere with the next one that I'm doing. Because what you have to remember is you stamp your image and then the next one that you stamp when you've masked that off will appear on the top. All right. So again, stalk on the flower behind it and this bottom petal just inside the circle. Now, depending on how far you put the stalk over here will depend how many flowers you get round your circle. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute, because I've done um, about three or four of these now while I was doing all my prep. Um, and I haven't got the same number of flowers on any circle. And that's because you will put it in a slightly different place every time. So then I'm coming in with the leaf. And the leaf is going to sit between these two flowers. OK, so I don't want it to be totally over the flower. I want to leave a gap under here between these flowers. And you'll see why in a little while. So I'll stamp my leaf. And that will appear between the two flowers. And then mask that off just in case. You probably don't need to mask the leaves, if I'm honest. But rather than be sorry and sort of get your stamp in the wrong place and interfere with your leaf and have to start again then I would I would just say it's worth masking go all the way around like this until you get to the other side okay now obviously I'm not going to sit here and stamp the whole circle because it does take a little bit of time and it's quite boring sitting here watching me stamping so I've done my circle I've stamped all my images and I've masked as I've gone along and now I've got to the end. OK, so you see here, if I just lift this up slightly and just wait for my camera to catch up so I make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, OK, you can see here where there's no stem on the flower. Yeah, because I, I cut it off and stamped just that, that end bit there. So that when I come to put my last flower in, I've got no stalk interfering with the flower. So if I stamp the flower, you'll see exactly what I mean. So if I just pop my original, has it gone? No. If I just stamp, put my mask on here. This is the original one, obviously, that I've cut the stem off. Ink my, ink my stamp up. And then I can place this so that it fits that last bit of the circle. OK, so you can manipulate it to suit your shape and your flower. 
okay and that fits in there beautifully so if I mask that off I can put my final leaf in in exactly the same way okay like so and then when you take these off you'll see what I mean about having no stalk interfering with that last flower so all the way round you can't see the stalk because as you're masking and stamping your mask is covering that stalk so the flower will sit on top of your mask so you won't see the stalk so when you get to the end bit because you started with no stalk you'll be able to alleviate that problem at the end as well. Otherwise, you'll end up with a stalk on the end, like I did, because I forgot to do it on mine. Um, where is it? If I show you on here, see here. Can you see this stalk here? This was the first flower that I did, okay? And I forgot to take off the stalk here, so it sits over that flower. Now, I don't think anybody's going to spot that, but if they do, it doesn't matter. They don't know that it wasn't meant to be there, do they? There's only you knows that actually you should have masked it off, but don't worry about it. I haven't worried about it. I've still coloured it in and I'll still use the card. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. <clears throat> now, I've kept this one out for a reason. Well, there are a couple of reasons, really. Firstly, I wanted to show you the difference between pencils and Copics. These are pencils, these two leaves here. And then I coloured this one in Copics just to see what the difference was. And I actually prefer the finish with the pencils. So that's why I've used pencils on my main card and the one that I'm doing today. Um, and, and it's all about, you need to have to be a brilliant colourist to, to colour these in. They're so quick and so easy that it, it's just... If you were colouring in a colouring book, it's like that. Um, you know, the, the guidelines are already there. So you're just adding colour to an already um, fabulously detailed image, if you like. OK, and I've saved one flower to show you what I mean. OK. But the reason I saved this was A, to show you the difference in the colours. And B, to say, when I was making my, well, do, doing all my prep, um, I was using offcuts of card, so I'm trying to save sort of big sheets of card. So I'm using bits that I've cut off other projects. When you add your circle, make sure that you leave yourself enough space for your flowers to go all the way round without dropping off the end like this one did. Because as I went round and I stamped it in, I suddenly realised that it's actually gone off the end of the card. I honestly don't think something that small is going to make any difference because when you cut it out and you add it to your card, you can cover something like that with a sentiment maybe. Okay, so you add your thing to the, add your picture to your card so it's sort of there and then cover your mistake with a sentiment. Okay, I mean obviously love you bunches doesn't go with thanks a bunch, but I'm just using this because I'd already got it cut out. But you can always cover up something that small. So don't don't just suddenly think, oh I've gone over the edge, I'm going to bin it, because you can save it if you're careful. So colouring in. I'm using Prismacolor pencils here. Um and I'm just using three greens, three oranges and a brown, my grey and my black. Alright. My black really is just highlighted the petals. OK, so if I was just colouring this in oranges, etc., it would probably lose the definition of the petals once it was coloured in. All right. Um, so all I've done is go around and add the black just to separate all the petals out, just to make them really obvious. OK, and when I say it's quick to colour, trust me, I really mean it's quick to colour. So I'm starting with three greens and these are. Um, obviously prismas as I said, moss green, lime peel and chartreuse. Okay, and I'm literally adding a little bit of colour. I hope you can see that okay. Um, I, uh, if 
if I just zoom in a tiny bit, let me just see if I can zoom in a little bit so that you can see it and then I can zoom out again in a bit. Okay, I'll wait for my camera to just catch up. Can you see that better? Okay, so I'm literally adding colour where I think the darker parts of the leaves are. So I'm going the side of this stem here. It is quite, it is quite um, thin, but you can go up on the edge of that flower. I would do your colouring in before you cut out. I did all this colouring in obviously before I cut this out, but I left one flower just to show you how quick and easy it can be just to colour it in. But if you cut it, if you colour it first, it'll give you a better guide on um, where you're cutting afterwards. So I'm literally just adding my darker green where I think the darker parts of the, the leaves and the petals are. Okay, and then I'm coming in with the next lightest, which is my lime green. And you can see it's it's quick. I'm not really not really being very precious about it. Um, I'm really just filling in now where where the dark green didn't go. Um, so it, you know it really isn't taking very much time at all. And it's just to give it a little bit of definition, just. A little bit of light and shade and then because there's a vein on this this leaf here that you can't really see because it's the same color as the green I'm just picking it out in black okay and then we'll do the oranges I mean that was quick wasn't it <clears throat> now the gray that I used I used to go in between the flowers and the leaves just to give it a little bit of um, just to lift the leaves really um, just to sort of give it a bit of a background. Now I tell you, <laughs> this card came about quite by accident because what I was going to do was stamp the card, stamp the flowers on my base card, and then just do a sort of um, a shadow around the whole of the wreath. Okay, and I started with my grey pencil and. <laughs> Um, I thought I'll just go a little bit wider I'll just go a little bit wider till in the end I'd done the whole of the um, base card in grey and I picked it up and I looked at it and I hated it um, it, it, it just looked awful and it didn't matter I used some blending solution on the grey pencil it, it just looked awful so I cut it out so that's how I left the grey bits in here because I'd started there and then gone on outside the flower wreath um, and so eventually I just ended up with this wreath that I then put on 3d pads um, and that's how it that's how it evolved so you know if you if you do stuff like that sort of happy accidents there are ways of you getting around them now I'm just adding you see how quickly I just did that base color with the lightest um, orange which was Spanish orange and now I'm adding a slightly darker orange and I'm adding this darker orange where I think the shadows would be so where the petals overlap see this petal overlaps this one so I know that's going to be a little bit of shadow behind this petal and if you've looked at lilies you know that at the top of the petal is a little bit darker the base of the petal is a bit darker and then the middle of the petal is quite light and that's what I'm trying to achieve here is just a little bit of light and dark a bit of shade and as I said I'm not being too precious at all and then thirdly my darkest orange which is mineral orange and again I'm literally just going over the tops of those um, darker parts of orange but I really want this to appear at the top of the petals to give it that little bit of definition on the top of the petal. OK, now this is, as I said to you, really quick colouring. I love colouring and I love the mindfulness of colouring and how long it takes you, how you can lose yourself in colouring. But with this, it's, it's literally as quick as you can see me doing it. Finally, I'm just using a brown. This is um, burnt ochre, 
and I'm going on and I'm just putting those um, those markings that you see on all lilies which are to set lilies aside and I'm literally putting the pencil down and flicking it just to give those little lines where you would see them on a lily not many just enough and then I'm highlighting those veins in the same brown okay so that's it now how quick was that but once you've done it it might, I mean, it might not look anything to you while you're colouring but once you've done it and you hold it back and you hold it away once you've added it to your card trust me nobody will know how quickly you've coloured that so I'm just going to zoom back out again so that you can see a little bit more I just wanted to bring you in on the detail a little bit there now then I'm going to put a sentiment in the middle okay and I'm going to stamp the sentiment before I put my 3d 3d pads on the back for obvious reasons if you try and stamp your sentiment once you've put your pads on the back you're going to lose bits of your sentiment because it's not going to have a flat surface and I'm also going to attempt to do a shadow stamping with this I don't know whether any of you have ever done shadow stamping but you literally stamp it in black and then stamp another colour as a shadow okay <laughs> bear with me it might not work but I'm going to give it a go just because I want it to look a little bit different to the one that I made as my sample so I'm putting my love you sentiment in the middle okay Perfect. I'll lay back on that. And then I'm going to just get rid of that black ink off there before I go into my orange. Now because Lisa's didn't take very much of the black off, did I? Never mind. It won't matter. Because Lisa's stamps are clear and you can see through them, you can do this method. Because what you want to do now, and do apologise if you can see the top of my head, what you want to do is hold the stamp over what you've stamped underneath slightly lower and slightly to the left and then stamp it down. Now, as I said, might not work, so bear with me. Oh, perfect. It's a little bit low, <clears throat> but I just think it gives a really super effect. See, if I was doing it again, I would... I would do the orange closer to the black because there is quite a bit of a gap there but when you look at that from a distance it will look like you've you've stamped the stamp in 3d um, I think you get that I think you get that effect looking at it that closely but when you look at it from a distance it'll look even better okay so finally I'm just gonna add you can see how many times I've done this can't you <clears throat> again that was um going off the edge but actually that one wasn't savable that was far too much off the edge okay so now because i've already stamped my sentiment i know which way up this is going to go and i'm just going to add that to the background on my card and that's it job done so i hope you enjoyed that everybody just a quick card using some of the smaller stamps that sometimes get forgotten on one of these um, fabulous stamp sets. So I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Bye for now.